Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Dives, Mr. Crackpot on Twitter. Welcome to my top 10 cornerback rankings for the 2022 NFL Draft. Guys, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you love the NFL Draft. Let's do this. Number 10 on my cornerback rankings is Darion Kendrick. A day two draft grade for this guy. It's not surprising in the least that this ball hawk from Georgia was a former wide receiver. Darion Kendrick has solid ball skills, as evident by his seven interceptions in his last three years and 14 pass deflections. Darion Kendrick is a jack of all trades kind of defensive back. There isn't one area that screams off the tape, but he's good to very good across the board. Kendrick struggles with speedsters outside, which we saw when he was matched up against Chris Olave a couple years ago. When challenged downfield, he can be a bit handsy. He likely projects best as a number two outside corner in a zone-based scheme where he can focus on closing on the ball. A strong combine, which highlights improved speed testing, could potentially vault Kendrick into second round discussion. Let's look at the tape. Has been so effective. Screen and it's off the hands of Harris and intercepted. Picked off by Darion Kendrick, the transfer from Clemson. Receiver, but still catchable. And normally, when that ball bounces up in the air in the middle of the field, like big around at linebacker, snap it to Jefferson. They'll throw it out to the left flat, and we eat it up. Darion Kendrick. And in the game, flanking King, who drops back and looks down the sideline. Intercepted. He tried to get it to Mallory, and Darian Kendrick, the All-American candidate at cornerback. Have that. You got to put it up in the air. Look at the confidence of Kendrick. He plays it as a receiver. Number nine on my cornerback rankings is Josh Job. I've got a day two grade for this dude. Josh Job possesses excellent size and length, as evidenced by his plus plus wingspan. He's physical at the point of attack and not afraid of contact. He doesn't have elite speed and he struggles with technique. Josh Job had foot surgery back in December that left him out of the college football playoff game against Cincinnati. Job started 24 games the past two seasons, including 11 of 12 contests last year. He needs to get stronger and he needs to build his technique over time at the next level. However, he's shown enough flashes of being able to leverage down the field. Joe plays with an aggressiveness and confidence that really impressed me while watching tape. Let's look at some of that tape. Special teams, and we're underway. The Rose Bowl and college football playoff semifinal. Tyree, speedy, and he oh. got blasted, and the ball comes out. The pressure off the edge as they come with it. He gets it out, and that ball is intercepted. Josh Job with the interception for the tie. Great job there by Job. Pressure coming off the left, and he just falls right out underneath it with tremendous eye. Tank Bigsby flushed. And the throw is tipped, and it's picked off. Gary just said no mistakes. Gets the gift. Just a 10-point per game. The high pass causes the turnover. My number eight cornerback on my board is Martin Emerson. I've got a day two grade on this guy. Here is a really intriguing prospect with great length, one who is one of the best of the best against the pass. The good news, this is a guy who allowed only one 25 plus yard catch last season. Martin Emerson's size and frame immediately stand out when you watch the tape. Whomever drafts this guy knows he'll need to be a little bit coached up at the next level. His 88.9 QB rating when targeted isn't exactly elite, but it's important to note that his best performance came against Matt Corral in the Egg Bowl when he was targeted five times and gave up zero goose egg completions. He's not shifty, he's not quick enough to slow down speedier receivers on the outside. He also doesn't have top-notch deep speed. The next logical question is whether or not Emerson will be best fit at safety in the NFL. That being said, his awareness and his instincts are very solid. Emerson's combination of length, size, and ability to diagnose plays are probably intriguing enough to get his name mentioned in round two of the 2022 NFL Draft. Let's move on to my number seven. Number seven on my cornerback rankings is Kyler Gordon. I've got a round one through three draft grade for this guy. Two things to know about Kyler Gordon. The first thing to know about him is that he possesses excellent scheme versatility. 
he should have no problem lining up inside or outside at the next level. At Washington, Kyler Gordon played both outside corner and in the slot, earning an 89.6 coverage grade. Second thing to know about this guy, he's got elite athleticism. Kyler Gordon is a two-time Bruce Feldman's freak list member. There is zero question that Kyler Gordon's combine numbers will be off the charts this year. I think Gordon will most likely thrive on the inside rather than outside at the next level. Regardless, I expect Gordon to be a high riser during that combine in the coming weeks. I think he'll most likely go in that round two to three range, but I left round one open due to his excellent positional versatility and measurables, which will be off the charts. Let's look at the tape. Garbers to the sideline and it's intercepted by Kyler Gordon. Start, we're throwing an outside route, an out route from the far hash. The ball has to travel quite a ways. Garbers with time, launches sideline, intercepted again. Kyler Gordon with his second of the night. Gets the feet down, the extension. He flipped. That's why he played the games. Mills has all day. He lets it go and it's broken up. 0 2. Long pass. Batted down. Kyler Gordon swatted it away from Roman Wilson. And number six cornerback is Roger McCreary. I've got a rounds one through two grade on this dude, similar to Trent McDuffie, which we'll get in a little bit. Roger McCreary has excellent versatility to thrive in the inside or outside at the next level. The first thing to know about Roger McCreary is that he has elite closing speed and the ability to mirror wide receivers in their routes. He plays with great composure and this dude is battle tested. McCreary saw 76 targets while allowing only 35 catches with 13 pass breakups last year. He doesn't have elite long speed, but he makes up for it with excellent closing speed and the ability to break up passes down the field. Roger McCree's length and time speed will surely have a great influence on whether or not he's taken in the first or second round. He's solid to above average when it comes to physical measurements. However, he is a tad raw. McCreary will surely benefit from a year of seasoning at the next level. However, this is a prospect with an incredibly high ceiling uh, that is also good to great in pretty much every area you're looking for in a starting outside cornerback. Let's look at some film. Fun. All right, well, if you have special guests, Deuce and I are certainly available. Absolutely. That football was available. It's picked off by Roger McCreary. Down the sideline, touchdown, Auburn. Exactly what he was able to do. And so you have a receiver that is trying to get him off. The receiver's in tight. Bryce Young doesn't have a big play yet today. Nice play defensively by Roger McCreary. Told you he'd be busy today trying to stay with Williams and Mechie and company. And a nice play there. We talked to Rod. Here comes the rip. Broken up by Roger McCreary. Young. Fires far sideline, Mechie, broken up by McCreary. My number five cornerback in this class is Trent McDuffie out of Washington. I've got a top 20 grade on this dude. I just love this kid's versatility. This is an impact player that can play all over the defense, including special teams. I love the way this kid is always around the ball, and I think he could be a major problem for offenses in the right scheme. He does that with his elite quickness, incredible quick feet, and short area burst. Unlike the top four in this class, he doesn't have elite size, frame, or length. What does separate him from the top four, however, is his ability to get physical against the run. This is a very good tackler, which should translate to the NFL from day one. He's allowed only 16 catches from 36 targets for 11 yards with no scores and five pass breakups this year. Size issues aside, Trent McDuffie offers everything you want in a cornerback prospect. He's got a skill set to be an impact guy in any type of coverage. This is a prospect with very good polish technique and football IQ. Similarly to his tackling against the run, I was really impressed with his awareness and instincts. He's extremely smooth with great anticipation and timing on routes. In addition to his elite versatility, he's also an extremely good returner, and that should also make him an instant impact from day one. Let's watch some clips. Jones, one more time. This one was blown up, and he's run down from behind. Knocked out of there. Yolo Foshio inside the 15. 
football security right here, too. That ball's way too loose. These Washington DBs do a great job. They're now two deep safe. They have a roll into a single now. Wow. Morgan directing traffic. Now lets it fly. From their own 35. Bentley looking deep downfield. 50-50 ball and it's intercepted. Washington comes down with it. My number four on my big board is Kair Elam. I've got a top 20 grade on this guy. One of my favorite prospects in this draft. When it comes to physical measurables and instincts, Kair Elam is at the top of the list. Elam's combination of elite length, speed, fluid hips, and aggressive play screams off the tape. He's one of the best in the class at reading the quarterback and dissecting the play. That aggressive play can be a problem at times, as evident by his seven penalties last season. Against the pass, however, he's only allowed 18 catches from 33 targets for 165 yards during the 2021 season. With a little more seasoning and some coaching, Kyrie Elam has one of the highest ceilings of any prospect in this draft class. This is a prospect who uses his length and athleticism well, making him near impossible to beat on the outside. Kyrie Elam is one of the best coverage corners this year who could do well coming on slow and getting coached up at the next level for a couple years. If it all clicks, Kyrie Elam could see himself cemented as one of the top quarters in the NFL sooner rather than later. Let's look at some tape. Perkins lofts one. 50-50 ball is picked off. Kyrie Elam. Grantham expecting, making it look like a blitz, but it being covered. Bennett has time, and it's intercepted. Picked off by... Kair Elam. It's Bama, and he plays well. He's going to win the Heisman. Here's an end zone lob. That's going to be intercepted. Seals underthrown ball. Kair Elam. A wide receiver for Virginia. From the 11, Perkins throwing great defensive play. You know, when people talk about the future of Florida football and why they're so excited, it's play. My number three cornerback is Derek Stingley. This might be the biggest surprise on my board here, but number three is Derek Stingley. This should be not a knock on this guy because I've got top 15 grades on the rest of the guys in this class. But similarly to my top two, I just can't ignore some of the measurables and real production I saw from my number one and number two. The first thing to know about Derek Stingley is his athleticism. He's an incredibly fluid athlete. He can change directions on a dime and possesses very good ball skills to become a major playmaker in the NFL. This is easily one of the best ball hawks in the draft, although we didn't see a lot of it last year. On the positive side, this is a prospect with one of the highest ceilings in the entire draft class. On the other end, Stingley has missed 13 games over the last two seasons after starting every game as a freshman in 2019. Regardless, this is a guy with the potential to completely take out an entire side of the field. If he goes to an NFL program that can polish him up and keep him healthy, that he's going to be a major, major problem for NFL wide receivers for a very long time. Let's look at the clips. Ted from his lazy boy. Whoa, big hit, and the ball came loose, picked up by LSU, and Andre Anthony. Touchdown! Fumble. Watch the speed to which he closes here and delivers a strike. Look how he raises. Down. From pressure coming, throws. Far side, it's intercepted by Stingley. Makes the play. Watch, he turns at the last second and finds it and makes the catch. Four-man rush going up top again. This one is intercepted. And the way he plays is perfectly, stays in the hip pocket, looks back for the football. My number two cornerback on my board is Andrew Booth Jr. I've got a top 15 grade on this guy. Andrew Booth Jr. checks off a lot of boxes for a starting outside cornerback. He's got a great combination of size, length, instincts, and very good to great athleticism. I love the way he's aggressive to the ball while watching him on tape. What separates Andrew Boot Jr. and everyone else is his elite anticipation instincts and ball skills. This is a guy who has a chance to become one of the elite playmakers in the NFL in a very short amount of time. 
He might get knocked for not possessing elite long speed, but don't let that fool you. What I really like about Andrew Booth Jr. is his fluidity in his movement. He's got incredibly fluid hips that allow him to change directions on a whim. There really isn't anything that Andrew Booth Jr. doesn't do well. For me though, what makes this guy so exciting is his ability to read the quarterback, anticipate the throw, and make the play with his elite hands. I love this kid. Let's watch the film. First and 10 for Boston College, thinking monumental upset, but hold the phone for just a minute on a defensive play by Booth. Like that to the boundary. Hartman with time, heaves it, Morin. And was it intercepted? Great play by Booth. I mean, turning around, making a play on the football, just an unbelievable play there. It's something going on a third and ten from his own end zone. He throws, and this one is picked off, and this time Booth makes a clean catch. Bell takes it right up field. Booth comes right out. I think that's exactly what happened. Jaheim Bell runs the wrong route here. Jason Brown. 23, man. Watch this guy. Brown sets his feet, throws the deep ball to double coverage, and it's intercepted at the one-yard line by the aforementioned Andrew Booth. My number one cornerback in this class is Ahmad Sauce Gardner. I've got a top 15 grade on this guy. Ahmad Gardner's combination of great size and elite production make him my number one cornerback in this class. If you're looking for a future lockdown cornerback on the outside, then here is your guy. Production-wise, he has been unbelievable. Since 2019, he has yet to allow a touchdown, he scored three of his own, and he has a passer rating allowed of 35.3. Athletically, Gardner checks off all the boxes with great length, great speed, great short area burst, and fluid hips. This is a guy who should excel in playing either man coverage or zone coverage at the next level. With a little added strength in the NFL, it's scary to think how good this guy can become in a very short amount of time. The only real knock on Amar Gardner is that he doesn't possess elite speed. However, Sauce makes up for that with elite football intelligence, anticipation, and instincts on the outside. This is overall, without a doubt, one of my favorite prospects in the entire 2022 NFL draft class. Coach again. The inside handoff fake, Jamison Williams chopped down on the swing pass for a loss of a yard. Freshman quarterback, Timmy McClain, the lefty ready to throw. He met pressure and he whips it downfield. This is intercepted on the sideline by Cincinnati and Sauce Gardner. Second and goal, pressure's picked up. Cole escapes, throws incomplete interception to Sauce Gardner. He just put it up under pressure and Gardner was waiting for it. Pine hit as he throws off the hands of Kevin Austin and incomplete. He's locked up with the receiver, tracking him across the field. See that left hand? What do you guys think of my cornerback rankings? Please leave me a comment down below. Message me on Twitter at Mr. Crockbot for anything about the NFL draft. Be sure to be on the lookout for my linebacker rankings coming out next week. Thank you everybody for watching. Stay awesome.